Hey everyone, me again. Um, big shout out to everyone that's a subscriber of mine. I want to say a huge thank you to all of you who watch my videos and uh, comment. I love the comments. Um, now, um, just a few things I want to address today before going on to the main video. First of all, I've noticed that some comments take months to come through to my channel. Uh, sometimes weeks, sometimes days, uh, sometimes they don't come through at all. I reply to every message I receive. So if any of you don't get a reply from me within the first two to three days, usually the first day, but let's say two to three days, then something's not right, your message hasn't got to me. So please don't think that I'm ignoring you. I've noticed with others that I'm sending messages and getting nothing back. It's not personal. Um, I do reply to everyone, so please uh, let me know if something's gone wrong because it's YouTube does weird things with messaging sometimes. Uh, huge shout out to Mermaid Treasure Hunter and Dirtfish Mish uh, because you guys are the reason why I'm doing this video today. First of all, to address a point from, um, sorry about the cars going past, uh, suddenly rush hour. Um, to address a point that um, Mermaid Treasure Hunter made, uh, she noticed that her channel's going up and down, a few going, you know, coming off. It's always the same. There are always a, a few people that unsubscribe after they've subscribed. There are some channels that aren't um, genuine. They're just setting up just to do um, a quick channel, trying to get subscribers, and then they disappear. And so their channel then gets wiped off. Um, but a couple of days ago, I was at 449 subscribers. And I was getting ready to do a, <coughs> a 450 subscriber video um, as a, a <coughs> sorry, me, as a prelim to my 500 subscriber video. So I got all the silver coins out because I'm giving away five silver coins for my 500 subscriber giveaway. And I got all the coins ready and I was going to do a video showing them all. And uh, I, I put everything ready and I just checked my computer again and I was down at 438 subscribers so uh, things can change pretty quickly on youtube 11 subscribers gone in a few minutes so that's not people unsubscribing that's youtube wiping out subscribers from your channel uh, why are they doing that well that i don't know um i i i don't know if it's that they're slowing smaller channels down i don't know if it's deliberate i i really have no answer to that i know um uh, mermaid treasure hunter noticed she lost quite a few the other day um so i really don't understand youtube don't be disheartened don't think people hate you and they're suddenly unsubscribing i know some people get really disheartened by this um uh, it's something that i think is youtube based and they're doing it whether they don't like um, for instance if you uh, sub to somebody's channel and they sub back and you haven't messaged them and they think sub for sub is going on and they really youtube doesn't like this sub for sub stuff and they may take people off your channel because they think that's happened um even the ones like uh, dukes of derbyshire now i watch his videos every week i comment every week and then all of a sudden i was unsubscribed to his channel i didn't do it youtube did it so i don't know why they do it but sometimes happens so bear that in mind when you're growing your channel, don't get too disheartened. Don't get too personally attached with the numbers because YouTube really plays games with it. Um, anyway, guys, I will move on to the rest of the video. So this is the view from my balcony today. Um, it's a pretty snowy winter wonderland. Uh, I just managed to get my challenge hunt in the park done against Corey the treasure hunter that one will be coming up in the next week or so that's well worth a watch we both found some amazing things um, but this is what I have to deal with at the moment which doesn't stop me going out but work commitments various other things are slowing me down um, but yeah everything is beautiful when the snow is, is out I don't know if you can see the way the trees are all covered beautiful uh, that piece of ground is dying to have a big snowman built on it maybe I have to get to that okay so 
on to the unboxing part. So here we are, the main part of the video. Um, excuse me, I'm not very professional with all this stuff. Um, still getting to grips with it all. Hopefully there's enough light for you guys. But this is the Scuba Tector Pro from Quest. Now, I did a, an a unboxing video of the Pulse Dive previously. I also bought the bigger head for the Pulse Dive. So once I've shown you what's in here, I'm actually gonna do a comparison with the Pulse Dive. So stay with me, might be a bit of a longer video, but we'll see what happens. So this is the box and in the top of the box comes your Quest detector. It's very, very solid, feels very good, very nice on the hand. And as you can see clearly, it's quite a big face on that. And then inside here, you have your instructions on the box part. Um, and there are different modes you can have, different sensitivities. But the advantage with this machine that instantly makes it stand out is it has two different ends on this. So you can have a lanyard attached to it, or you can use a rod and turn it into like a beach detector. Um, and I'm guessing it would handle the wet sand really well because it's built for doing underwater stuff. So, yeah. Okay, so this is the charging cables, lanyard, uh, wristband. There's also a nice bag that comes with it so you can put it inside. I guess that's the destructions. Um, which will go straight in the, no, it won't go straight in the bin, obviously. I will read them at some point, probably after I've used it. <laughs> and these are obviously the attachments for, um, you know, you can put a, a, like a broom handle, I guess, in there, or whatever you want to use for, um, maybe a crutch handle would be the best thing in there, depending on the size. I'm sure you could think of something to put in there. The lighter the better. So, you know, it's starting off looking good. But it, why does it, why does this stuff never go back in the box the way that you've taken it out? There we go. Kind of, sort of. So you get all the instructions, the box is nice, even the box is nice. It's a moment of truth. What happens when you switch it on? Well, you'll notice immediately that you have a little screen there that tells you that your battery is good and you can adjust the settings. So let's, and that's right up on boost. That's the alarm, low, middle, and just for argument's sake, let's put it on the high. So that's the third setting. It's got a light. Um, and it does sound as well as uh, doing vibration. Now I've got a coin there. Now, I don't know if you can see that, but you see how close I am to that coin. Up here, nothing. Down here, got it. Okay, cool. I just found myself a coin, but at two, no, no, it's not even two inches. It's struggling. Two inches and above, it doesn't pick up that small coin. Let's try a bling ring. Let's get that coin out of the way. Okay, so that picks that up at about an inch. Two inches, nothing. Let's try a silver uh, necklace. <laughs> nothing, absolutely nothing. Okay, gold ring, oh yeah. That picks up that. It's a really nice signal. 
very strong and even at like two inches or so it's still picking it up now all of this jewelry this is also a silver piece but it has a, a bigger pendant end on it does pick that up but not the chain doesn't pick the chain part up at all but it does pick the end piece up all of this I found in one go I guess somebody dumped a load of jewelry now that's a, a gold 14 carat necklace and there's nothing it's not picking anything up okay silver ring also found in the same batch really it was crazy okay that's a really nice sound so it would pick that up and that's well i'll show you let's turn it on its side that's a good eh, maybe three inches gold ring yeah two to three inches coin mm, inch maybe let's try a bigger coin okay so maybe at two inches there it starts petering out okay that's a bit sobering that means things have to be really on the surface and any of this gold chain stuff you ain't going to find but let's say somebody very conveniently lost it in a clump like that still nothing <laughs> still absolutely nothing okay well that's the scuba detector pro i like the design of this i like the fact that you can use it um, on the beaches as well as underwater and it vibrates very well it's um, it makes a good sound uh, it looks very solid so there are lots of plus points and I mean look at that it falls flat easy to go got a little bag stick it in there you can carry that anywhere on a plane go anywhere with that but bear in mind what I just showed you You've got to be pretty close to your targets. So let's try the not to macro standard coil. Oh, I didn't show you. When you buy this as standard, it comes with a lovely plastic box, comes with your small head, standard head, comes with the things, instructions, all the other bits, um, lanyard, and because you can use this on land as well as in the sea so you can change it to a pin pointer so it's um it, it's very adaptable for what you want to use it for and let's see the comparison with a small coin straight off the bat not doing anything okay so that's somewhere similar now let's make sure we've got it set on the right setting. That's three beeps. So that's now at sensitivity three. There is one more, same as the scuba detector, it can go one more. <laughs> well, that's funny. Not hardly picking that coin up at all now. I have to be right in, well, really close. Let's try a slightly bigger coin. Also the same. You got to be pretty much, well, it's maybe an inch and a half. Silver ring. Two inches, similar. 
gold on the necklace? Nothing. Bling ring? Yep, yeah, okay, that picked that up. That's quite a good signal, actually. Good depth. Really nice silver necklace. Just about gets the end of it. Does not pick up the chain. Sorry guys, mixed up. That was not a bling ring, that's the gold ring, the diamonds in. So that's a good signal. Well, I thought that was a bit strange. That's the bling ring, my apologies. Nothing. Doesn't pick it up. Oh. <laughs> really funny. Okay. And this, which is quite a chunk of silver. Nothing. Pulling it over? No. Clumping it up. Oh, come on. Can't get it to pick that up at all. Let's try another silver necklace. Mm, just about, yeah. But it's picking up these end pieces, yeah. It's not picking up the chain or the catch. It's only picking up the end piece there. Ah. And big five franc coin, yeah, okay. Well, you would be able to pick that up. Now for the basic comparison. Look at the size difference of this. So if you put these together, you can see that your area of discovery is, it's huge on the Scuba Tector Pro because have this on, do they interfere with each other? Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay, they don't like each other. Not so much of a surprise. You can see with this, oh, that picks up the five franc coin. A good few inches. But it picks it up everywhere. So it's the whole thing that you can detect with. Same with this, but obviously not when you're outside of it. So in terms of a comparison, if you just buy the basic model of either of these, I would say the scuba tech has got a much um, better face in terms of detecting but they both let you down on the jewelry. So if you might, you find a solid silver ring, you'll find the solid gold. But if you're looking for necklaces, um, like that gold necklace there, nothing, nothing. What was that? No, that was, oh yeah, that's um, picking up the side of the table. Sorry guys, what did I say? Not very professional with this stuff. Yeah, ah. Now that picks up that, that brooch. Okay. Now that's interesting. That one. Kind of, not that way. Mm. Sort of. Yeah, okay, this one has the edge on the other one, but it's detecting that brooch. But look at it, it's like, you would have to be right on top of it. When you're waving this around, you're not always right up against the sand, but you would have to be to pick that up. But it is picking that up. Whereas this one, it's 
catching it occasionally. You turn it on its side, nothing. Face on, side. Face on, side. Face on, side. Oh yes, I know. So, side, picking it up, face on, picking it up, side, picking it up. So this one, on the third setting, just like that one, is actually uh, picking it this up better. Now, if you wanted to do a slightly different test, which I'm going to show you now, switch that off. Always twist the head when you're holding the head so you don't damage it. Don't grab the end of it and twist. Always hold the base. So this is the bigger head that you can buy. Now this bigger head does not fit into that lovely case that they give you. So it makes the case almost useless when you're carrying around. Yes, you can have your, your base piece and the other bits inside it, but this head does not fit in there. So let's switch that on and let's have a look. Bling ring. Nothing. Silver ring. That gets it. And that gets it quite far. Gold ring. Also gets it quite well. Small coin. <laughs> Small coin fail. Really? Nothing. Yes, I know you don't like each other. I don't blame you. This just about picks it up, but it's right on top of it. Let's come back to the brooch. Now this picked it up sideways on, it picked it up front ways on. Nothing. Doesn't pick it up. Well, there we go. Just catches it on the edge there. Sideways, nothing. Mm, yeah, no, a little bit there. Nothing around here. So, that's perhaps the most sensitive part of the detector is just there. Oh no, no. <laughs> now it won't pick it up there, but it's picking it up there. I don't understand these machines, I really don't. Switch over. You know, this thing picks it up right across the detector. And on its side, yeah, it's not so confident on its side, but it is picking it up where the other one didn't. Silver necklace, Ooh, just but I'm literally touching it. You know, I'm, I have to be pretty much touching that thing to get it to react. I know, sorry, hang on. This one, nothing. Even touching it, nothing. So that necklace, look, nothing. I find coin, no problem at all. This, nothing. Um, well, for me, that's a sobering thought because I, I've been using this uh, 
pulse dive and I found quite a few things but I'm realizing that if I'm an inch or more away I mean yes if you have a big coin look at that I mean that picks it up three or four four inches silver ring also good distance to two two inches maybe more that's a sobering thought with this small coin nothing doesn't pick it up but that's a swiss coin and i know the numbers on these aren't very strong i know you don't like each other but this one does pick up the small coin everywhere but you have to be right on it um, the outcome of this comparison test what am I going to say to this I know it's a long video I'm sorry guys but I I'm also interested in this um, so gold necklace Well, I'm picking it up now. But you can see that I have to be like on it for it to pick it up. And it's clumped up. And they aren't always going to be clumped up like that. No. But this one. I'm even touching this thing. This is a gold necklace clumped up <sighs> okay so my thoughts are scuba tector definitely can pick up more targets it seems it is a little bit more sensitive a little bit but you've got to be right on top of your targets for it to um, find the stuff the other one, I think probably detects a little bit further, um, but it's less sensitive. So even some of the things that you would find. Um, sorry guys, GoPro battery just died. Um, outcome, final thoughts. If you're a really serious treasure hunter, I'm not sure I would recommend either of them now. Um, I think the pulse type is brilliant that it has, uh, you can turn it into a pinpointer. I think if you want to have some fun with the kids and go out in the rock pools and uh, maybe do a bit of diving, um, you'll find some stuff definitely. And in some countries like in, in England, the coins actually ring up stronger. So I think you will find more of those. The Swiss coins are not so good with the numbers. I should have actually got some uh, English coins as well um, to do the comparison as well as euros. Uh, maybe I'll do that as well if you guys want to have a quick look at that. But the outcome is clear. Both of them, they couldn't pick up um, on the bling ring. Although, you know, I think the scuba, um, yeah, the scuba Tector Pro can pick up on some of this stuff, but it's literally touching the thing. Uh, there is an extra boost, which um, probably would give you a little bit more power, but I wanted to do a fair comparison. Both of them are on the third setting. This gold chain, the pulse dive didn't even pick up. Um, and the scuba detector did when it was nicely bunched up, but it was literally touching it. So if you had it spread out, which most chains are going to be like that, they're not going to be nice and neat in a ball. You're very unlikely to find the gold. I think I've just tangled that up a bit. Oh, no. Great. Um, so yeah, there are pros and cons with both. Um, I, I like this, that you can use it on the beaches. Um, uh, but I've had to rethink, you know, I was really excited to get both of these machines. I was totally excited the first time I used that. But now doing that, this comparison, I am not so sure. I'm going to take both of these in the water. 
and I'm going to see what I can find with each of them. Um, as you can probably see outside, it's pretty snowy at the moment, but um, when I can, I will get in the water with these guys and see which one, because I know it can be different in the water, which one actually hits the targets the best. But I'm going to use, as a fair comparison, I'm going to use the bigger head. But even with the bigger head that, they, that you can buy with the, um, the Pulse Dive, the Quest Pro is still larger. So bear that in mind, the standard Quest is bigger than the Pulse Dive. The normal Pulse Dive that comes all nice in that package, in comparison, is half the size. So bear that in mind. Um, if you want it for a pinpointer as well, then I would say the Pulse Dive is probably your best machine. If you only want to use this in the water, I would probably go for the Quest Scuba Detector Pro. Neither company support my channel or even know about my channel, so I'm doing as fair a review as I can of both of these. Anyway guys, thanks for watching. I hope it's not been too long-winded. If I can change things or do things differently, then please feel free to let me know. And moving on.